We give glory to God for yet another week in the land of the living, and we want to thank you for always creating the time to listen to the revelation knowledge the Lord makes available through this channel. As you listen to God again through his mouthpiece, Anthony Adifarakin, may you receive light, and may the grace for application and manifestation rest upon you in Jesus' name. Be blessed as you listen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, and adoration because there's no one like you. We celebrate your majesty. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. As we have gathered to learn at your feet uh, this week, we pray that you give us understanding. And we pray that you grant us the ability to apply all you'll be teaching us. Thank you for always answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, for this particular week, uh, God has granted us to witness in the land of the living. We're going to be looking at a very important topic. A very, very important topic. And the topic is keep close to me. The topic we're going to be considering for this week's episode of Glenn Podcast is keep close to me. That's a statement made by Jesus Christ. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 9 for our text. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 9. And we'll read verse 23 to 25. Luke chapter 9, 23 to 25. And we're going to be using the Living Bible um, for this particular episode. So Luke chapter 9, 23 to 25 from the Living Bible. Then he said to all, Anyone who wants to follow me, must put aside his own desires and conveniences and carry his cross with him every day and keep close to me. Verse 24. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it, but whoever insists on keeping his life will lose it. And what profit is there in gaining the old world when it means forfeiting oneself? The Lord bless his words in the heart in Jesus' name. That's, that's the word of God. And everything I've just read were actually statements made by Jesus Christ himself. We are looking at keep close to me. And we just read Luke chapter 9, 23 to 25 from the Living Bible. Jesus said to keep close to him every day. In that opening verse, that's exactly what he said. He said, anyone, white or black, whoever you are, anyone who wants to follow me, must put aside his own desires and conveniences and carry his cross with him every day and keep close to me. Jesus said to keep close to him every day and to keep close means to watch someone carefully to see what they do or to watch something carefully. That's the way dictionary, you know, expresses, that describes this particular statement. It said to keep close to one means to watch someone carefully to see what they do or to watch something carefully not casually but carefully so as followers of jesus not only are we expected to put aside our own desires and conveniences not only are we are, are we expected to carry our crosses with us daily we are also expected to watch jesus carefully to observe all he does keep close to me we are to watch him carefully to observe what he does. How does Jesus behave? What's his thinking pattern? Hmm? How does he reason? How does he respond to situations? How does he re respond to issues? When situations that should normally generate anxiety comes to Jesus, how, how, did, he, how, how did he handle it? How did Jesus handle anxious moments? How did he handle worry? How did he handle, um, you know, how did he handle offenses when people, when people said bad things against him? How did he handle it? How did he handle betrayer? How did he handle denier? You know, how did he handle busy schedules? Jesus was very busy. How was he able to manage his schedule? How was he able to have a balanced schedule? How? How did he relate with family members, friends? Watching him carefully, keeping close to Jesus is watching him carefully to observe all he does. And guess what? The best avenue to do this is via his word, especially his teachings. The word of God is the best avenue to observe closely what Jesus 
does, what he did, and what he's still doing because he's alive forevermore. So there are things he has said, there are teachings he has already, I mean, he already has already presented, there are things he has said, there are messages, and there are things that he's still doing now. For instance, he's currently interceding for saints. If you observe that, then you should become an intercessor. That's following in the footsteps of Jesus. Okay? The best avenue to learn, to keep close to Jesus, to observe everything is doing everything he did so that you can pattern your life after him the best avenue to do that is via his word especially his teachings no follower i repeat no follower however hold can outgrow his master's teachings no there is no follower no matter how old you are no matter how long you have been following there is no follower that can outgrow his master's teachings you know, there's a popular saying in Africa. They say you may have as you know you may have more clothes than an elder, but you cannot have more rags. <laughs> and I and I, I agree with that. You can have as many clothes as you want. You can even have more clothes than an elder, but you cannot have more rags because before you were born, that elder has been using clothes, so he has a lot of rags, and that's experience. So no matter how old you are. As a follower of Jesus, you cannot outgrow your master's teachings. No matter how sophisticated your education is, you still need to learn from Jesus. You still need to learn from Jesus. Apostle Paul has been following Jesus. Apostle Paul has even, you know, traveled in, in you know, in the realm of the spirit. There was even a time he visited paradise in, you know, in vision. He was still crying that I may know him. You don't know everything. That's why I say keep close to me. No matter what you what you claim you already know about Jesus Christ, there is still so much more to know. You still have things to learn. And the only way to do that is to keep close to him, especially through his word. So you get into his word and meditate on his teachings in order to apply the truth daily. We are expected to pattern our lives as Christians to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah appeared, Moses appeared when the voice of the Father came from, came from heaven. He said, this is my beloved son, right? In whom I am well pleased. What did he say after? He said, listen to him. Say, hear him. So that's why the teachings of Jesus Christ are very, very important. What did he teach on forgiveness? Watch, watch him carefully. Listen to that. Read it and apply it to your life. What did he teach on giving? Do that. What did he teach on praying? Do that. What did he teach on fasting? Do that. Every teaching of Jesus Christ is expected to guide us in our daily lives as disciples, as followers of Jesus. And that's why we are considering this episode. Jesus Christ said, keep close to me. Keep close to me. Put aside your own desires and conveniences. Put aside your philosophy for love of life. Put aside your own psychology. Just carry your cross daily. Keep close to me. Watch what I do. Watch how I handle situations. Apply the same principle and you will have the same result. When there was a storm, what did Jesus do? He rebuked the wind. He calmed the storm. Do the same. Watch him carefully. Did he panic? Was he running a task? Was he crying? Was he, you know, what? He, can't, he, he, he simply rebuked the wind and he commanded the, uh, the, the storm to come. And that was the result. In the same way, when storms of life come your way, you are not to panic because Jesus didn't panic. So you shouldn't. You should also rebuke the wind and calm the storm. Do what your master did. That's how to keep close to him, watch what he does, and to learn from him. That's exactly what it means to keep close to him. And that's what he wants his followers to do. So I pray for you. The grace to watch carefully the grace to observe jesus and to live your life the way he lived this may that grace rest upon you in the mighty name of jesus as you open the bible and you begin to listen you begin to read his teachings the grace to apply may he come upon you in the name of jesus and the result he got may you get even much more in the mighty name of jesus so you want to surrender your life to jesus christ so that you can begin to watch him you can begin to learn from him you are going to be saying the following prayers after me you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ so that you can watch him closely to live your life in the way he expects. You are going to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of your salvation. Please forgive all my sins. Save my soul and make me yours forever. 
I surrender my life to you today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. I'll be praying with you now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word again. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for the privilege of having Jesus as an example to follow. Father, accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for all my listeners, the grace to keep close to Jesus, to watch him, to listen to him, and to pattern our lives after him. May that grace rest upon us all in the mighty name of Jesus. I join my faith with my listeners, the grace to live the life of Christ on earth. May that grace rest upon us all in the name of Jesus. And for your children who have decided to surrender their lives to you, I pray, Lord, that you accept them in the beloved. I pray that you forgive all their sins, write their names in the book of life. And the grace to also pattern their lives after the teachings of Jesus. May that grace rest upon them also in the name of Jesus. And at the end of everything, when our sojourn is over on earth, help us to see your face in glory. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. We give thanks to God for the revelation of His Word. If you said that prayer of salvation, congratulations. Your sins are now forgiven and your new life has begun. Please locate a Bible-believing church near you and start fellowshipping with other believers there. Or if you need help in learning how to live this new life in Christ Jesus, kindly send us a message through our website, www.glome.org, and we will respond accordingly. We will meet again next week for another episode if the Lord has not returned. Until then, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you.